starting with the Central Division, I'm just going to read off where the standings were last year. The Bucks ended up winning the division. Uh, they're seven games ahead, followed by the Cavs, then the Bulls, the Pacers, and Pistons, which either one of those teams I think are going to be big contenders. Pistons, I know we've touched on this many podcasts ago, but they just need to rebuild and get back to the roots because they're a horrible team as of now trying to compete in the NBA. They need to just go for picks. Pacers, I'm not too worried about them. Although they did beat the Bucks in the playoffs, the Bucks weren't at full health or strength. Fun fact, I was reading up on the Bucks this year, or excuse me, last season. Out of their trio of Giannis, Middleton, and Lillard, they actually only played 45 games together out of 82. Only five of those games came after the All-Star break due to injuries. So I think a lot of people are overlooking the Bucks currently just because of the poor performance last year, Giannis being hurt. Middleton basically trying to carry the team and then Lillard being on and off. I think with the offseason together, hopefully they can all get healthy by the time playoffs come around. I have them winning the division easily. The Bulls, I think, are a sneaky team that could be pretty good given their front court. Levine's always a stud, in my opinion. Lonzo Ball's back after two and a half years, so that's pretty cool. Obviously, he's had a lot of struggles off the court and on the court with injuries. Very happy to see that. And the Cavs, I think, are slightly overrated in the division. I think they should get exposed long term but we will see i mean they're only seven games back last season from the bucks so that's my breakdown of the division the biggest hurdles for the bucks in my opinion moving forward will be the celtics if they can stay healthy i definitely think they'll beat them but like i said it's a big if If the bucks can all gel together they'll be very well and good they're one of the older nba teams and if the trio is playing together it's pretty obvious that they're not going to win in the playoffs so that's my breakdown there uh, do you want me to go into coach of the year and my personal accolades or should we wait till we all get done with our divisions? Yeah, we can, we can maybe pause on those and, and recap them there. I, I, I did want to, I did want to ask you, you said the bulls you think are an interesting pick. Are you, do you have any, any belief in the, the Pacers or anything with, with Cleveland there? Or you, you really think bucks are just kind of going to run away with it? I think the Bucs are going to run away with it. I mean, reading the stats off that they were 70 games ahead and they only had basically full strength for half the games in the year, like they could easily win the next closest team be 10 games back from the Bucs if they just remain healthy. That's obviously the biggest question mark. Uh, the Bucs definitely have some depth with Bobby Portis and Pat Connington coming off the bench. Obviously, those two are studs, but it'll be interesting. If they can remain healthy, I think the Bucs run away with it. I. I guess my biggest concern with the Bucks is the health, right? Like I, I think Middleton's just not what he once was with all of his issues that he's been having. I wonder how much he'll be out there. And when I was looking at it, it I just don't know if they have some of the depth where they have, you said Connie Tin's going to be playing some more minutes for him, for them. I don't know. I don't know if I love the lineup. I think Giannis and Lillard though, like you were saying, they're really going to have to carry him. So the healthier they are, it'll be interesting. But I, I just wonder where Cleveland and the Pacers will shake out. I do think, though, they do have some great young talent on those teams, too. With the Bucks, the biggest problem they usually have is shooting when it comes to the playoffs. If they can't space the court for Giannis, that was a, definitely a big deal back when I remember before we had our 2021 run, I believe, just trying to space the court. But now looking at the team, there's going to be a huge pressure on Gary Trent, I believe it is for the shooting guard for the Bucks that they just got. Former Duke Blue Devil, just so you know, seven years in the NBA. He's going to have a lot of opportunity to space the court for them, given that he's like not one of the superstars on the team. Yeah. And was he came over from was it Toronto, maybe? I don't know. But you're right. He is, he's a knockdown shooter, I think. And people have wanted him on the Bucks for a long time. So it's a good mix. I hope Lillard and them can all gel together. But it's always the same thing. The Bucks usually need to have spacing for the court for Giannis to be able to drive. We're not shooting hot. It's usually a very rough game for us to try to win. Do yeah. you not think the Pacers are going to be a big threat in the in the in the division? I mean, Tyrese Halliburton's kind of on a heater recently. Thanking old uh, Fifty Cent. I that video that... was a wild video. I don't know if you saw it, but that is the wild video. Is right. Yeah, somebody was comparing it to the Taj Boyd ESPN interview when he was showing his study mates in the background. That's awesome. I did not see the video, but going strictly off basketball, definitely don't think they'll be competing with the Bucks. Obviously, they beat us in the playoffs, but we weren't at full strength. Therefore, I'm not too worried about it, looking at it from an objective opinion. You're, so you're not worried. Oh, go ahead. 
No, go ahead, Jacob, please. No, I guess I, I was just going to say, I really like Hallibur- Halliburton, what he's able to do. Matherin, I think he's not even fully unleashed yet with the Pacers. You have Miles Turner. Love their lineup overall. I think the big question mark for me, it seems like Cleveland should be a lot better than they actually have been playing. Like they, you still have Donovan Mitchell. I think the one guy, Garland's regressed a little bit. The one guy though that I don't think has taken that next step, Mobley seems like he really hasn't turned into the player everybody was quite expecting him to yet. Uh, but they're, they're a roster where if they stay fully healthy and they can get it going, I would not be shocked if they end up leading this division. Up. No, I think Cleveland with the trees. If Coleman remembers uh, our old barber in Austin, he would. Yeah. He was an interesting lad. Okay, I'll say this, but he was he loved Cleveland like so much. Like we we bonded. He gave terrible haircuts. <laughs> if we're being completely honest, he gave terrible haircuts. But I like talking ball with the guy, and so did Coleman. And he would always like literally lose his mind over the tree. And he would never be able to name any of the names right, but he loved the trees. But yeah, that's all Cleveland's got, I think. I, I love talking Cleveland Cavalier basketball for 25 straight minutes. Yeah. That's what we're about to do right now. Because, Bo, I don't think you could be more wrong. I think the Bucks, if you looked at it, they are one of the older rosters in the entire mm-hmm. league. What does that shape up to? Missed games, only caring about the playoffs, mailing in the regular season, only getting, only trying to get in the playoffs. And then once we're there, hey, let's see what this team can do. Regular season-wise, Chris Middleton's already hurt. Dame Lillard, you get 35 a couple times every two, three weeks. Drop 35, then 17 points. Then you have Brooke Lopez, who's 35. You have Giannis, who's also injury prone. You have no Thonis anymore. They have no one coming off the bench. But no, seriously, though, depth-wise, I, I don't think the team's very deep. It's considering the fact that you're this old, you have minimal depth. Yeah, you have Bobby Portis. Torian Prince is a nice player, but who else do you have? Connaughton? Okay. He's a good three-point shooter. DeLon Wright, A.J. Green, Gary Trent. I don't think those guys are – they're regular season guys, but they're not going to – Move the needle. You're going to lose. Milwaukee's going to lose games to like, on a random Thursday night to Atlanta on a, or a random Tuesday to Utah. This is not a team who goes out and wins regular season game after regular season game after regular season game. They just don't have the depth and they're too old, nor do I think they care. I think Cleveland is the team you need to look at. They're only going to get better. They're going to improve from last year. They're much younger. They're hungrier. And if you really look at their lineup, Garland, Mitchell, Okoro, Mobley, and Allen, outside of Giannis, I think that's a better lineup. Now, playoff-wise, yes. I think once they get in, I think that's going to be a different story because, again, going back to health, if they're healthy, yes. They've gelled. They've won a title before. Dame's hungry to win a first title. I get that. Regular season-wise, I don't think this team can stack up and win the division. I think Cleveland runs away with it. I'd even venture to say Indiana maybe finishes second and the Bucks third. I, my, team, my team to watch out for, Detroit, this is such an interesting, interesting roster. Um, and the fact that you've added Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Malik Beasley in the offseason, you had shooters. And then is. let Tobias Harris cook. Let him go. And you have that. And you also have that veteran presence. I'm not saying this team's going to blow anyone out of the water or potentially even make the playoffs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this would just be a fun, fun team to watch. Mm-hmm. That could make that's I think it's going to be better than Chicago and finish fourth in the division. Is Doc Rivers still the head coach? Doc yes. is still the head coach. Yeah, just uh, curious. I respond to the, the more. It, this is the podcast. More than there's one. one thing you said in this. It's the biggest key difference. You said without Giannis, it's a better lineup. I'm speaking if we're at full health. If Giannis isn't on the court, we're not winning. Yeah, but you won't have they they, they won't have full health. Chris Middleton's going to play 50 games a year. Brooke Lopez is going to play 60. Dame's going to play 55 to 60. You're not going to be at full health the entire season. And that's if you get to the playoffs healthy after the grind of an 82-game season. To be completely fair with you, I do agree with that. The biggest thing, though, with the NBA is you have to peak at the right time. Like, if they're injured, let's just say up to the All-Star break, like they did the opposite of what they did last year where 
after the All-Star break, as I said, they only had five games where Middleton, Giannis, and Lillard played together. If they flip that and after the All-Star break, everybody's back healthy and they kind of pick up the momentum going into the playoffs, like, that's perfectly fine. But I completely agree yeah, with what you say. I if mean, they're, they're no injured, doubt. They're not that's win. no doubt at all. But that's a big if. If you can keep those uh, team from 30 up, your entire starting five is 31 years old and up. That's a big if from keeping those old guys healthy in the entire season or peaking at the right time towards the end when that wear and tear on the body does last after 82 games. Do we start to see the conversation of you look at Giannis, he's been so loyal to Milwaukee, bent over backwards to stay there, and the organization has done a lot to try to bring different people in. Do we look back, though, maybe we fast forward midway through the season, we start hearing rumors that Giannis wants out. And will we tie this back to them dealing Drew Holiday was the first step and the first domino within all this? I mean, well, he's not any younger either. Two things with that. Yeah. I think, one, the fact that this conversation is even occurring, not just within our podcast, but in the national media, does tell you the story of what everyone thinks about the Bucks' current roster. The fact that, hey, we might be giving this up middle of the season because this is not a championship winning team. That feeds the point there. But but two, yeah, I would agree. Um, I don't think Dame was the answer. An aging superstar who doesn't like to play defense. Drew Holiday is your perfect NBA postseason guard. Can guard a ton of positions. And he can score the basketball too. It's not like he's an offensive liability whatsoever. Back when he was in Milwaukee, the reason for us getting rid of him is because he had struggled so poorly in the playoffs shooting. That's why we got rid of him. Therefore, the mindset from the Milwaukee staff was, let's go get somebody who could score, thinking Dane would be the answer. Obviously, that's been a huge flop. It's like you're giving up so much defensively, getting rid of Drew, and now you're trying to make up for it with Dane. At the end of the day, defense is going to win championships because when the ball is not bouncing your way, the only thing you can control is your defensive effort. Now, you, you can I make up what you're saying. Though. You can bring in shooters off the bench, but defense, I don't think you can. I don't think you can replace his kind of talent on the defensive end. Completely yeah, agree. I, yeah, I think you saw a lot. Dame was getting exploited, causing a lot of defensive overloading with the rotations within the the towards the end of the season there, and it created a lot of hunting. Right. I mean, getting him in pick and rolls, putting Brooke in awkward positions. And the thing about Drew that I love, he is thick. He is very strong. He's like six four, can guard a lot of different positions, whereas Dame, much smaller. They're having to play a lot, play around a lot more with the matchups and they don't, don't have that flexibility there. So I the one thing I will say though, I, I know I was talking about Cleveland, and I, I do think that they're they could run away with this uh for the division. If the Bucks make the playoffs, Bo. All that veteran presence, all of the chemistry they have will help. I do really like Indiana, though, where you have Nemhard, which I think he will only continue to pro progress this year. Nobody mentioned Pascal Siakam, so that shame on everyone here. He's still got some gas left in the tank. Him and uh, Miles Turner are two, two decent bigs down low. But I'm telling you, Matherin, I know he's... he's being floated, sixth man of the year, coming off the bench. I hope we see him starting at some point because... I think he has a great, great ability to do his game. And I, him and Halliburton on the court at the same time would be, be incredible there. So I actually love him coming off the bench. Really? Because they have a fantastic rotation right now of Halliburton, mm -hmm. Emhart, Neesmith, Siakam, and Turner. But you bring in Math Mathern on that second unit uh, at the end of the first quarter, that's lightning in a bottle right there. Yeah. I wouldn't mix up with your rotation with what you have right now. Keep him in that second rotation and bring him in because no, not many other teams are going to have a second rotation that can guard that or have that same spark plug that he would uh, bring on Indiana. Yeah. The only thing it. with Indiana I worry about it, and it's the same thing going back towards last year. And yes, they got to the conference finals, but they hob they, they beat some hobbling ass teams to get there. Milwaukee, New York. And then they got just blown off by Boston. The thing is, is defense. What have they done to become better defensively? I, yeah. I don't honestly, I think it's gonna be the same team as last year. Um, I, I don't think they're gonna change, they've changed anything defensively. So, this is gonna be one of the great offensive teams, so much fun to watch. But when it comes time to the playoffs, they'll get bounced first, second round. Man, I'm today years old finding out that James Wiseman is on the Pacers. 
wow. That's not exactly where I thought he was. But yeah, I still thought he was with the Gold State Warriors. So <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little behind, I guess. You thought he's still at Memphis? Dude, yeah. He was <laughs> getting coached up by Penny, probably collecting checks or some, doing yeah. something. Amazing. Any any final thoughts? Do you guys want to run down who wins the, wins the division and then potentially give one through five or at least one through three? Hmm. I can do mine if you want, the central division. Bucks, in my opinion, obviously win it. Cavs are second. I think Pacers are third. Bulls are fourth. Pistons are last. I think the Bulls could be good, but knowing how bad the Bulls have been historically, it's kind of hard to cheer for them. Mm-hmm. And kind of like what you guys are saying, the Pacers can be sneaky good. Like they can pull it out from nowhere. And Halliburton, I'm a big fan of from Wisconsin, went to Iowa State, is a stud. So it's kind of biased there. But Bucks, I think, should run away with it by, I'll say, at least five games. And I think moving, and not to interrupt that everyone else giving their predictions. I think moving forward, especially with the with the Bulls, the only talk of this team is going to be, yeah, Lonzo coming back. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt again. And two, one of they trading Levine. I think that's, if if they start, if they come off of, or start off poorly, I think they trade him. But they say that every year. But I don't think it's a fun, flashy team to watch. I like the addition of Giddy. Um, Kobe White's going to be better. Buzelis, Mateus Buzelis is going to be a fun player to watch off the bench as well. Candidate for Rookie of the Year. Um, but I don't think there's much in this Chicago team. Josh Giddy. Yeah, you know. yeah, Josh Giddy. Him and the kids. Do you want to give your picks, Coleman? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Cleveland, one, win the division. Indiana, two. Milwaukee, three. Detroit, four. Chicago, five. Same. Not to be unoriginal, but same. All right, I'll be a little unoriginal. I'll go Indiana, one. I'll go Cleveland, two. I'll go Bucks three. Um, Pistons four, Bulls five. We'll see. Maybe maybe Nimhard's found some some juice, some more juice, more 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 team too. Shout out to Indiana, the great great state of 